Hey guys, what's up? I got everybody here from TMI. Don't forget to write us an email at TMIPodcast2018. That's TMIPodcast2018 at gmail.com. Let us know how we're doing. Also, check us out on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at TMI underscore podcast 2018. Just use the numbers. Don't spell it out. Ooh, don't forget Facebook.com slash TMI podcast 2018. Follow us on the Apple podcast app. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five star review. All you YouTubers out there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, TMI Podcast 2018. Look for the popcorn bucket. That's right. Also, check us out on Spotify and the Google Play Music app for all you Android users. Follow us and subscribe everywhere. We appreciate it. We're doing it for you guys, the fans. Thank you. The moment our fellow geeks, dweebs, nerds, other unfortunates have been fervently waiting for has finally arrived. It's time for TMI Confessionals of the Nerd Confessionals Kind. Of the nerd Confessionals kind. of the Nerd Kind. And now, your hosts Dave Odinson Warhowski, Jeff. Nerf Herder Chandler, Jim Kaiju Baker, Mike Mjolnir Evans, and Danielle, that's what she said, Warhouseki. And now, let's get on with the show. Here is TMI. Hey, here we are, back again. Hey, back again episode, show, number, guys. show number two. Show number two. Uh, unfortunately, we are without two, <laughs> two uh, certain people, so we're going to fill in their little uh, stuff, uh, yes. as we, you know, topics and everything like that, because yes. they gave us what their input is on certain things. And it's so, not that they've lost us. confidence right. in the show. They are just, this is just a temporary absence on, on Mike <laughs> and Danielle's part. That's right. So, so the whole group will be back together again in force. That's next right. Show. Ooh, Hopefully next to the show, unless nothing happens with like my this dog. Is, I, I see anything. this as reminiscent <laughs> as when The Walking Dead had that whole Glenn dumpster gate. <laughs> episodes you and you would still and they took his name out of the credits for a while because yep. you, and you uh, didn't know is he coming back is he dead yes, yes. <laughs> but our two are not dead they are coming back don't worry or stuck in a dumpster let's so, just clarify so, that so to start there hey since you just mentioned it let's just start with the walking dead here uh as of right now the day that we're recording on uh sunday april whatever the heck today is the 14th 14th 15th 15th. Today is 15th. Sunday, Ooh. April 15th. Uh, it is Max Day. Obviously, when everybody hears this, uh, the Walking Dead season finale would have already happened. It is happening tonight. Uh, Jeff is currently an episode behind, and uh, Jim and I are all caught up. Um, the bus. Yeah, so uh, a lot of interesting things I thought happening so far in this season with the Walking Dead. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. So before, listen. So here's my outtake on, or here's my uh, hot take on this, if you will. Um, was before Negan came into play in The Walking Dead, uh, and you know after they killed off, uh, oh gosh, who, who was the last, who was the last villain there? Uh, was it the governor? I think there was one or two between the governor and Negan. Who was the last big bo- evil Gosh. boss? <laughs> the evil boss. I was like, level oh, up. Well, there was yeah. Alec, or no, uh, what? No, not Alexandria. Um, but that's the problem with The Walking Dead is it yeah, just starts to repeat itself. You know, <laughs> yes. once one boss is done, right. then you got to move on to the next, even worse boss. Right. I think it was the wolves, wasn't it? Um, that's right. That's uh, right. It, it yeah, was the they wolves. did bring those guys in. Yeah, and. And it seemed like to me during that time when they were doing, I, I think it, I think it was maybe one or two seasons, and uh, The Walking Dead for me personally, it started getting a little lame. Okay, and I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I know a lot of people aren't gonna like it. That's why it's a hot take. But <laughs> to me, it started getting a little lame, and it became so, it became too much soap opera. It was like too much of a soap opera for me. And right. uh, and then you know what? I, and then you know, but then. Danielle and I, we had it all on the DVR. You know, we were still recording every episode and 
And, you know, there was a time where I didn't watch it for about a month or two months, and, and we didn't watch it because it was, like, getting to the point of lame because, of, you know, it yep. was starting to get a little soap opera like I said. So, but then Negan came into play, and I really, really enjoyed Negan's character. He did really revitalize his franchise. I think yeah. he really brought a lot of energy back into the storyline. Right. And gave these characters a purpose. Mm-hmm. And yes, it was, and it was, and it was just like the attitude Negan has, and you know he's he's he'll say whatever he wants without caring about what anybody thinks about him, and that and that smart, um, you know that smart attitude he has, and 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 all that. It just I was I was enjoying that, and like you know everybody was hating on Negan obviously because you know he killed Glenn. You know the season premiere with you know, <gasps> the first Spoiler. episode he had. Yeah, if you're not caught up, then I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about. yeah, it was <laughs> <just> <laughs> too late. <laughs> it's like you know that first episode he killed off Glenn and Abraham. Abraham, yeah, you know, and it was that. like, and then just the way he was g- carrying himself and 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 the character, like Jeffrey D. Morgan does such a great job with it, and that got me back into it. That that just got me back in. I was like, I love this character. I love this guy, you know. Yes. And there was a time, oh, like, he, like I he said, is great. But um, I think with the storyline, the way it's going, uh, the, the 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 audience is going to want to see Rick get his retribution. You oh yes, the only yes, way he yes, can totally. do that is to kill me. No other way. What he's out been of promising to do, right. and totally. which is think, sad because yeah. you're going to, you know, you're 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 going to lose a great villain, but. Oh yeah, and once that happens, once Negan is gone, um, and they have to do that in order for the show to be believable. I think they can't have Rick and Negan, you know, become friends. become friends, right? Yeah, buddy. even though I know in the in the in the comics it does, but I don't think that would play necessarily on the show. Mm-hmm. They would have to give the characters not a new Negan, not a new evil boss, but some other focus, maybe on you know what is causing this. Like get back to that aspect of the story. Right. Which has been completely put to the sidelines. Exactly. Yes. That's, Nobody cares about that. I mean, yeah, the zombies are so second yeah. offhand at this point. They're not yep. even you know, but I, I think that the point of the show is is that they've proven that humans are more dangerous than any zombie. Sure. You know that that these things are just wild out there and whatnot, but it's a, it's the other it's the rest of humanity that you got to deal with, right? And and you know, obviously from season one, season two, it seemed like it was more you know the group versus the walkers, correct? And then they started yep. introducing all these uh, you know these these villains and bosses, if you will, like Jim yeah. was saying, you know. And then it became people versus people, you yeah. know. Yeah. Meanwhile, still having walkers, you know, irritate. And, and there and you know between gunshots you know they hear and then they start congregating all around what's happening and whatnot mm-hmm. but um you and know for a herd every two seasons yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right but uh, i would love to see it end on a you know on a on a high note you mm-hmm. know on a give it a, a a straight finale like lost rather than have it peter out you know as people lose interest right right so it's so, a you good know, point on lost lost was so riveting for so long <sighs> And you have to give those guys credit that, you know, they did have an end game in sight, but, this, you know, the studio didn't want it to end. Right. So they're just like, please make more. Right. <laughs> right. Kind of and feel at that least, way. Yeah, you kind of feel that this, way with the show. We, we you know? could have spinoff shows. You know, if you end the you know, the, the mothership, The mm-hmm. Walking Dead, you still have Fear or, or any other show. Well, we know. Well, that's I think that's the, the, the problem with the show now is that so many of these main characters are being pilfered off somewhere else. You, we know we know for a fact that Morgan is going to Fear the Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that the last couple episodes, he has been the most riveting character. Yeah the one that you're most invested in, you know, he's emotionally distraught. He's, he's having issues, you know, dealing with this stuff where, you know, at this point you see Daryl and you see Carol and they're great characters. Carol's, I think one of the biggest character developments from the beginning of the season to, I mean, beginning of the series until where she is now. Sure. Um, but they're not really serving any, you know, they are where they are. They're not really kind of serving any more purpose. Right. You know, Daryl's kind of dropped off to the sidelines. He's almost like a caricature at this yep. point. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And and I mean, and, I I think I think when it comes to fear, uh, you know, obviously, I think they really want to introduce uh, Morgan's before time than what we saw him introduce into The Walking Dead. You know, uh, 
I mean, have we seen like, you know, his family or anything yet? You, you know, like, or, or is Fear the Walking Dead with Morgan in it taking place after the first time he met Rick and, you know, it was just Morgan and his son? You know what I mean? Right, that fills in the blanks. Right, oh, exactly. Does Morgan. it fill in the time right. when the Morgan was absent? Take place prior. Right, it does. Or at least right. it, it would have to do a massive time jump. Right, and the, oh, that's an interesting theory, though. Right, you I mean, know, we know like, but did it happen in the time when Morgan was absent in The Walking Dead? Before we saw him again, right, before right. He found Rick again later, and right. already found out that his son had been. Right. Yeah. So what well, we will know in just a matter of hours. So I think so. That's right. We can discuss we can discuss the finale and the uh the season premiere. Yeah, so speaking of that now, um how we were just talking about timelines, I'm gonna jump off of the walking dead real quick. And um we're gonna transition here to Spider Man and Homecoming. <laughs> so, You're jumping right into it. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So there's this huge yeah. <laughs> there's this huge theory going around, and uh for some reason Spider-Man Homecoming is not in the MCU timeline. And for those of you that don't know, and if you, for some reason, you don't know, MCU stands for Marvel Cinematic Universe. All the movies they've created, like Thor, Iron Man, all that, yada, yada, yada. It all leads up to a specific time, so that's what Marvel was doing. Or that's what they made us believe, and maybe it's not, and that's why Spider-Man's not in there. Now, Dave, you have to explain <laughs> what this comes from. What 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 we're gonna do in the next ten minutes or so is go over our Marvel, Marvel rankings, uh, our Marvel cinematic rankings. Yep. So you're talking like the last eighteen movies over yes. a ten year span. And right. in order to kind of help us um, sort out the chronological order of the movies, Dave has this book that he picked up, and it's an official Marvel publication, I believe. Um, that kind of goes through the movies yep. from you know from Iron Man right through to Black Panther, mm -hmm. and there's a very interesting omission in this series of films, according to this book. Right, and actually, according to the book, Captain America: The First Avengers that came out in 2011 was actually should be the first movie you should watch in order, not Iron I Man. Guess it comes even out though, in the 40s. right, even though Iron Man mm -hmm. came out in 2008. For some reason, they want you to start with Captain America: The First Avenger. Well, that's like that that's like people later. who want you to watch Episode One of the prequels before Episode Four. <laughs> the prequels, yeah. We need yes. to we need to dismiss those. Yeah. People. <laughs> yes, oh you God. do, because you you do need the prior. It only helps knowledge. The, yeah. the, the 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 prior knowledge that you get from watching Iron Man and knowing what's to come later, in a you know in anticipation of the Avengers. Right. So I think they should be watched in the in the order that they're made. Yeah, I agree absolutely. Which is what. Because we have phase one, phase two, and phase three. Right. So you're talking, what, 2008 was Iron Man. Then we had the Incredible Hulk, Thor, Iron Man 2. Now, how come all the other movies have like a subtitle, but well, Iron Man only got two and three? Well, uh, I'm sorry, say that, say that one more time. <laughs> all the, so, 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 all right, so let's keep going. So, so the sixth movie was Captain America, the first Avenger. Then you have Avengers. Iron Man 3, Thor, not Thor 2, Thor of the Dark World, <laughs> yeah. Captain America the Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, even though we may or may not, Thor Ragnarok, and then Black Panther. Those are your 18 movies that make up the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, and at the, as as you we've given away already, as at the time of this recording, uh, Infinity War has not yet been released, which will obviously be number 19. That's still a couple of weeks away. Right. So at this point, Black Panther is the last movie to have been released. Mm -hmm. And a great movie it was. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, so, was yes, it? It was or was it? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> So, but but to continue Dave's train of thought, Spider Man is not included in this Marvel chronological um, listing in this book. Right to watch and in order. We can only think because it's not um, a strict Marvel Studios film release, it's, right? Right, it's Sony um, made in tandem or with um, with input from Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. But um, it's part of the brand. Spider-Man is in Civil well, War. It ties. I mean, it ties directly yeah. in right. Civil War. There's yeah. no possible way that you can 
get away from this not being part of this universe. I mean, they they bent over backwards. The studio bent over backwards to get him into this universe. So mm-hmm. yeah. it just may be a serious oversight, or like what Jim said, it's just it's just the fact that it wasn't a straight up Marvel owned yeah. entity, and yeah. they're co oping it with Sony. For our purposes, he's back in. Spider-Man right. is part of the chronology here. <laughs> it's good because uh, then... And it was a good movie. It really was. It was very well done, Spider-Man and all that. And, you know, yes. I don't see why he wouldn't be in there. But obviously, for some reason, he isn't as a writer. It's, I it's love... only taken three actors in order to nail it. Well, I love the Tobey Maguire movies. Just oh, I agree with you. The novelty think... of seeing Spider-Man on screen was just phenomenal back then. Sure. Yes. Yeah, but, I yeah. Toby Toby Maguire was a great Spider Man. But having said I that, I think he was. I think he was. I think he was a better Peter Parker. Uh, Andrew Garfield, I think, was a better Spider Man and not such a great Peter Parker. Hmm. This kid, that's Tom a good way to look Holland, at it. Tom Holland is a great Spider Man and a great okay, Peter Parker. He yep. is. I agree with you there for sure. He he nailed it. Yeah, they, they did their homework on this one. And the Garfield Spider-Man, as good as he was, I didn't like the ultimate Spider-Man storyline, how they kind of um, departed from the classic. Correct. Movie. They punkified him. He was a street kid. Just Yeah. No, they did the not- whole Oscorp thing, and it was just too, I think, deviant from what we had known before cinematically. Right. Correct. Mm-hmm. Let's get into it. Okay. All right. Okay. So here's our rankings. We don't want to. We don't want to. You know, bore you with going. Each of us going down our list of eighteen. So we're just going to do our top five and bottom five, and hope. Let's start, with, let's start with the bottom five, though. All right. Let's, let's do that's it. That's how I had to do it. Okay. So Jeff, do you want to go first? Oh. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I will say the bottom of my barrel is the Incredible Hulk. Um, Interesting. I just did not like this movie at all. I've seen it a couple times now. I try to give it a chance, and Norton just doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, especially now that you know Mark uh, Ruffalo. Oh well, guy. absolutely. Especially. So there's another character yeah. I took three actors in order to kind of nail. Although I do like the Ang Lee version. I thought that that I mean that it doesn't. It's not part of the this Marvel universe. It was kind of set pre. But he did a phenomenal job of taking that character and blending that whole comic universe with the, he's jumping through the panels and they they really kind of picked up on the comic book aspect of it. But I did like I did like Eric Bana a hmm. lot better than this guy. Uh, Seventeen was uh, Thor: The Dark World, uh, just just way too dark, and especially <laughs> after seeing Ragnarok, uh, I think they finally found their niche as far as what they can do with thor yeah he's not this 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 stodgy uh you know god yeah right uh that's point untouchable taken. point taken yeah 16 was iron man 3 which i i it's slightly below 15 which was iron man 2 um so it, i could swap those if you persuaded me one way or the other they're they're interchangeable well um and then 14 is the original thor which again, which is it was it wasn't a bad movie, and, and the problem with with ranking is is that on each of their own, you enjoy them for what they are. Yeah. But then when you had to put them in the list, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't want to put them below this one, and, and it just yes. becomes like this convoluted, you know. But uh, Iron Man two and three are pretty low on my list, um, and then Thor. So those are my bottom five. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know how they match up with Jim or David. <laughs> well, okay, Dave, go ahead. Well, I can tell you real quick, I'll jump to 16. I also had Iron Man 3 at uh, 16, like you did. Okay. So, um, super powered pepper pots does not work for me. Right. And also, teaser as well, Mike also had Iron Man 3 at uh, number 16 as well. Okay. So, yes, you know, let's not um, forget our missing members. Yes, that's yes, right. Exactly. Uh, and Danielle, I'll just go right down the list. Danielle had that one at 15, actually. So, okay. Iron Man right, 3 so seems about the same ballpark. Right. Yes. And and we might as well keep going. I actually had Iron Man 3 at the at the bottom of my list. Oh, Ooh, so you, that, that was, was even worse than the whole. Wow. <laughs> so, we, so, we are kind of in. Agreement We're all in the same agreement. Topic. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. now, like Jeff said, you know, it's not that I disliked it on its own. When I saw it in the theater, I had a good great. time. Absolutely. You know, I enjoyed Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. But comparatively, it just didn't do it. I think I think it's safe to say we all enjoyed every single Marvel movie, but they all had their differences, obviously. 
Correct. So that's why, you know, I, like like you said, it's a ranking system. And when we had to do it, we were like, oh, man, is that, you know, is that one better than that? No, but we yeah. we are not dissing any of these movies whatsoever. They are all very well done. So yes. I know I when people hear like, this, they might, you know, tweet too. us and complain right. about it. But, yeah, I heard you hate my movie. Yeah, you know. <laughs> right. like, but I think a lot of it has to do with re- repeatability, you know. Sure. Am I going to enjoy it the second time? Do you start to pick it apart? Um, right. You know, does it not? And and again, you can't help but compare it because now there's 18 of them. Right. So like Thor, when Thor came out, it was great. Yeah. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, but now, like I said, Ragnarok really kind of set a new standard and mm. you can't help but say, ah, oh, this is like far superior because, of, man. Anyways, anyway, so I'll uh, I'll I'll continue here real quick. Um, so my least favorite one if you will i'd say had to have been black panther and uh, you know um i mean like i like i said before all these movies were well done black panther was very very well done you know it was a very well done movie the graphics the cinematic effects all that stuff it was an awesome movie the storyline was great as well but for some reason, I you know, out of all just, eighteen just of those movies, I like all the other ones better than Black Panther. I don't know why. And um, so there's my take on that one. At at seventeen, I had Captain America: Civil War. So wow. that was wow. That mm-hmm. yeah, you know that, that was. Explain I mean, explain yourself. I, I, I just <laughs> <laughs> no, like I just felt like you know after. You know that was that was the last official Captain America movie that they made, right? Yep. And 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 you know, like the first one really resonated with me. Anyways, you know what I mean. I really enjoyed the first one. Uh, a little teaser, the first one. Uh, I mean, you know. Anyways, no, I won't even get into that. But so what? it it, it just no, it just you know the Silver War one. It was, it was, it was good, but it just. Well, it was it wasn't one of those ones that really you, you know. Not, did you not like it when friends fight? No, I mean I love it when friends fight. I guess you know it's a little agree to disagree and conflict. Were you, were you Team Cap or Team uh, Iron Man? See, that's the thing. I love Iron Man. I love oh. Tony Stark. Oh, so now you know, we're yeah, okay, you know. So I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, or that's Iron why Man I enjoyed it so much, obviously. But the bad guy role, in, right? Uh, Civil War. And maybe I'm Team Villain and everything, and that's why I enjoy Negan so much from The Walking Dead. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, you know, I, maybe I'm. We're not even that, into but... the confessionals yet. No. <laughs> yeah. So. I like dark people. <laughs> All right, I can't wait now. What is your sixteen? Uh, sixteen, which we already mentioned, was Iron Man three. Okay. Okay. Um, or do we go down to fifteen, or is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do fifteen. There you go. That's okay. Good. Give Dave one more. Come on. So. <laughs> So 15 had to have been my Thor Ragnarok. I have to. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry. This one disappoints you. This one disappoints. I mean, it was it was good, but I felt like it was trying to be too much like Guardians of the Galaxy. That's where I, you know, okay, you know, that's where I kind of was like, what is going on here? But and that's why I really enjoyed the Thor, like the first Thor, because you know they introduced them, and you're like, man this character is awesome you yeah, know and like he was such a yeah he was such a yeah. you know a badass if you will uh yeah, you know and great. uh and and all that in in those first couple ones and then uh, the ragnarok one i mean it was like i said all these movies were very well done okay. but yeah. you know it just to but me I, it just seemed like too much of guardians of the galaxy but and, i think that's yeah. funny because if they came out of the gate with a thor movie with that it would have been different. Uh, it I'm, would have. I'm, right. I'm sure. And it, you might not have liked it off the gate. You sure. know, out of the right. You know, right from the beginning. Right. You know, you have to kind of have those two stoic Thor movies up front. That mm-hmm. you know, he was the hero, and, right. and you know, he was cocky or whatever. Yep. And then the the fact that they're three movies in. Well, more if you count Avengers and Civil War and all this, where you've seen him. That now you now you can kind of play and have fun mm-hmm. with the character. And mm-hmm. I was very nervous when they announced the in the beginning when they were doing Thor along when, when they announced they were doing Captain America. And I always thought that if they were to do Thor real, not realistically, but, um, but to, tr- to stay true to the comics, they would have to give it like a gravitas. It couldn't be um, uh, tongue in cheek. It, it would have perfect. to have like a serious Lord of the Ringsy kind which of, which they did, which they, they did. did. Yeah. Which they did. And I loved it. 
Um, but the, I liked how they they messed with the formula after a few movies. They sure. you know, they they took away the hammer. They they took away his eye. Yeah. Um, but, but you know it's funny. Hammer. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get into this when when we when we talk about our our <laughs> uh, our top five. But okay, so let me let me go through very quickly. Go to your as as we said, Iron Man three was my least favorite, um, just because <laughs> I think it was more of a Tony Stark movie than an Iron Man movie. Not that that's bad. I agree with but, you, but you right, uh, paid to see the man in the suit. Yes, yes, <laughs> and I was a little disappointed, even though it was he was very funny. Ben Kingsley does not turn out to be the real no. man. <laughs> I love that twist, though. I'd say, I it was a great twist, and he was very yeah. funny. But right. but I was you know, and I don't like to get any spoilers, so I had no idea that this was coming. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the character from the comics with the ten rings and the mystical oh, yeah. aspect of it. So and what's it great is that they yeah. they teased him in the first Iron Man too. Yeah, ten rings. Yeah. So so I was a little disappointed that we didn't get to see the real man. He was a pretender. Yeah. Which they did allude to in one of those Marvel one shots. I forget what the name of it is now, but on one of the discs, I think it's Thor: The oh. Dark World. They uh, one of the one of the followers of the real Mandarin goes to visit Ben Kingsley in the in prison, and they ended up kidnapping him and bringing him to this. So I I can't wait to see that movie. If they did an Iron Man four, I would hope they would bring in the real Mandarin. So anyway, that was my least favorite. Um, the next least favorite of mine is Ant Man. Oh. And I see that. Explain, high on Dave's explain, list. please. It's 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 right in the middle of my sweet yeah. spot. You see, I just thought that that was kind of the most inconsequential of the movies. It was lighthearted. I thought it was funny, but it 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 didn't feel important. You know, it was just like a kind of a subplot, just another movie. throwaway story. But he plays such a major part in Civil War. He does, and so Civil War. I think he's, he's much better in Civil War. Um, but but you couldn't you could not have introduced movie. him in Civil War without having that movie begin. Correct, correct. So I kind of look at that as um, kind of on a par with Captain America, the first Avenger, which I think is much better, but, which I think is much better, but it, it needed, it, it, you needed that movie, that Captain America first movie in order to step up to the others in the series. And I'm hoping that that's the same with Ant-Man. It definitely, he steps up in Civil War. And well, I we have do have Ant-Man and Wasp the, coming, so. Yeah, I have high hopes for that. Uh, okay, so so we've got Iron Man three, Ant Man. My next least favorite is what do I have here? Captain America: First Avenger. Mm. So again, I loved it when it first came out, but I think um, Winter Soldier and Civil War just kind of blew it away. Um, to say nothing bad about it itself, it just the other ones I thought were were better. And then lastly, 15, The Incredible Hulk. Um, just because, again, because as Jeff was saying, the Edward Norton aspect of it, and it's just kind of forgettable. Um, yeah, the abomination was an yeah. abomination. Yeah. And and um, and I think they shoehorned it in there. That, like There was no direct reference to the Marvel Universe at all, except for the end shot where yeah. Thunderbolt Ross meets with uh, Tony Stark. Right, right. And they did tease at the end that uh, the leader as a possible new villain for the Hulk, but it never came to be. And I don't think that they have any new Hulk solo movies on the horizon. So that never happened. No, because they kind of ate that up with, uh, you know, Planet Hulk uh, materializing in Ragnarok. Yeah. yeah. Which I thought was great, but. Yeah, it kind of killed two birds with one stone there. So, so. Yeah. All right. So let's go into our favorites. So Jeff, do you want to, do you want to begin with your, should we start it from, from five up to number one? Yes. I'm, I think like we should. Casey Kasem. Yeah. Like how we started with the yeah, worst before and then working our way down, here, which is, I okay, think Jeff, what's your number five? Oh, number five. Number yeah. five is Iron Man. The original Iron Man. Any like particular reason why? Iron Man, uh, which I absolutely love. Love that movie. The whole the, the whole uh, Mark One suit when he comes out of that cave was just I mean epic. I, I I absolutely loved it. The reveal at the end where he you know reveals that he is Iron Man. Loved it. But there's a point where <laughs> you have to just start stacking these things on top of each other. Mm-hmm. So Iron Man number five, number four, which you're gonna Jim's gonna kill me on this is Avengers. Hmm. Oh, it's up there. Okay, yeah, I, I respect the number four. Right, it's it's you know that's a culmination of everything we saw leading into what is it uh, phase one, 
was a phase one or phase yeah, yeah phase yeah, one no. so it was, i think it, avengers was the uh was the finale of phase one right correct which was just i mean gobsmacked it was it was it was everything as a seven-year-old nerd reading these books wish that you had on screen 15 20 years ago uh so number three is guardians of the galaxy which i actually want to make higher because it is uh, i walked out of that theater with with a grin on my face that I, you know the soundtrack everything just hit my sweet spot it was it was phenomenal yes. loved it and i was i was so in search of what the rest of that tape held because i looked at the soundtrack <laughs> and you realize okay there's only 10 songs on the cd or 11 right. songs on the cd and he's got like a, a 90 minute tape there there's got to be right. more on oh, that yeah. thing yep. I, I couldn't find the whole the full set list no it may not exist anywhere uh, number two is Captain America, the first Avenger. And my number one is Winter Soldier. Uh, I will nice. add a caveat to that, which is I was never a Captain America fan as a kid. I never read the comics. I did read Avengers. Captain America was always front and center. Um, but those movies I can watch endlessly. Winter mm -hmm. Soldier, I think, is probably one of one of the greater sequels that have ever come out. The Russo brothers just absolutely nailed everything about that character, who he was, what he stood for, um, and just took everything that that had been established in the first Avenger and took it to the next level. Hmm. So that is my number one movie, Winter Soldier, Captain America. All right. That's a good Dave. top. That, that's a pretty solid top five. Uh, <laughs> my number five I have <laughs> down uh, is Thor. And like I was explaining earlier about it, obviously, when they introduced the character, it was like, this dude is awesome. And it just, I thought that first one was just so well done. And, uh, you know, you really see into him. And then, you know, his his uh, little lady friend he had back on Earth there and everything like that. I thought, you know, that was very well done as well and uh, all that. So, anyways, so I got Thor at number five. At number four, I have Iron Man. Like I said, a huge fan of Iron Man. And Tony Stark, um, again, I couldn't get you know I couldn't talk even more highly of it than I already have. It is a great there movie. Um, number three I have is Spider Man Homecoming, and uh, it and maybe that ties in with me being a fan of Tony Stark since he was in there and helped Spider Man yeah, yeah, and yeah, both yeah. of them you know together. Yes. But uh, I just thought that was really cool. I know there was a lot of people that didn't like it because you know. So oh, Spider Man's supposed to get bit by a spider, and then he has you know these webs that he shoots out of his hands, you, you know, and then you know not being um, a tech a technology type of Spider Man, I guess if you will, like this one is, you know, and uh, yeah. a lot of people had issues with that, obviously, but you but know the great thing about that is is I was so glad that they didn't rehash that whole story over again by this. No, time. they already yep they just yeah, right. lo yeah he was already established. You, you, we've known the yeah. story. Yeah, it's been it's been retold numerous, <laughs> numerous times in yeah. the theater alone, let alone yeah. You know, they just got into it, and I really appreciated that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, my second I have down is Ant Man. There you go. And um, I don't I don't know if this has something to do with me when I was a kid and watching the movie Ants. Oh, you know the Pixar. I I, I yes, think yes. I think it was Pixar that uh, it was not Pixar. It wasn't? Oh, yes, it is. No, well, no, there's, ants, no, there's ants two. Is a no, Bugs, no, Bugs, Bugs Life. life is oh, a Bugs story. Life. I'm I sorry. Apologize. That's the one I was talking about, not Ants. I'm ants sorry. is the Woody Allen. Yeah, one. I'm talking about a Bug's Life. My, my fault. My fault. Go. But, you know, obviously we, it was all around Ants. And I don't know if I enjoyed that, like, that view they had from, like, an Ants perspective and everything they being so large, job you know, and, establishing that. like, yep. yeah, right. and, and, and I think one of the coolest scenes from Ant-Man was when he was in the tub. And yeah. the, and, the and, water. Right, you know, the dude turns on the water, is like a flood <laughs> just comes yeah. over and everything like that. Like, I just, I don't know, I really yeah. enjoyed that movie. And like I said, I don't know if it was because when I was a kid I enjoyed A Bug's Life or whatnot, but... Uh, just really enjoyed that movie. So, and I do, I do have to give props to the quantum realm scene of Ant Man when he almost gets stuck in the quantum realm. I thought that was very cool. That yeah. that which was, also that was cool. sets up exactly you know future. But I, yep. I, I think it kind of set up the Doctor Strange movie, which is actually pretty high on my list. Mm, yeah. Um, but when you start, you know, you start broaching that that kind of mystical realm, right. 
Right. Like, and actually, we did. Danielle and I actually just watched that last night or yesterday morning. We actually just watched Doctor Strange again because uh, I saw it the one time, uh, and but I just there was in in the house there was like a lot of people talking. I couldn't hear everything. I was like, you know what? I want to watch this again. And we ended up watching it again, and I enjoyed it even more this time around. You know what I mean? And um, like you said, that mythical realm and just when he just kept going and just kept repeating in in the realm and everything and uh, whatever the heck the the dark guy's name was Dormammu. Uh, yeah, Dormammu. Yeah, Dormammu. You know, <laughs> this is this is the one thing I will say, which is the the cinematic version is great because for years you'd read these characters' names in a comic and not know how to properly pronounce them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and in comic books over the years, have taught me some pretty big words. You know, for years I thought omnipotent. <laughs> It's it's omnipotent, but I didn't know any better, so I read right. it the way it was spelled. Sure. Well, I, yeah, I've got a confession to make that I, for years, I thought Tatooine was Tatooine. Tatooine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, continuing down. Last but not least, number one on my list is Guardians of the Galaxy. There you go. And it's not uh, a bad st- See, but you can't go wrong. It doesn't matter who you put at these lists. No, exactly. It and, and then which ways you're wrong. And like, Guardians like, is truly exceptional. Right. Yes. Right. And it's like, you know, think about this, okay? So if you were stranded on an island, all right, and you had to pick one of these 18 movies to constantly to watch. watch, and it was the only movie you ever got to watch again mm-hmm. as you were stranded on this island, all right? I would have picked Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's because it has the it has the right amount of like comedy and the right amount of action as well, you know? And if I was stranded alone, I'm I'm going to want to laugh, you and know? I'm going to want to have a good time going on there too. So there's a lot of the pick up on and look at right over the numerous viewings. Yeah, you know, and just I really really enjoyed that movie and Chris Pratt was just is so good at it playing that character. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. yeah and and to date that is probably still his best. Yeah. His best role. No doubt. No doubt. So that's my top five. Nice. All right. So I'll, I'll go into mine. Five and four, Guardians 1 and 2, respectively. Um, okay. Because mm-hmm. I love them. Um, I liked four, just or four. I like two just a little bit more than the than the original, just because of the presence of Kurt Russell, who I've always oh, loved. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so him as ego really put it over the top. Even though that little scene where they were, you know, doing the dad and son ball throw was a little hokey. A little hokey. Yeah, was, uh... yeah but, it, but but it did feed into the whole yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, because it did tell you that Chris Pratt's character is still, you know, just a kid. You know, he's he, just he, right. right. He's, yeah. he's longing for that parental yeah. 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 So number three for me was is Thor Ragnarok. Um, love the Thor movies, love the first one and the Dark World. I think Dark World is unfairly maligned. I think that's like a, a really nice Loki movie. If you love Loki, you're going to love the Dark World because I, I don't think he's ever funnier than in that in that movie. But Ragnarok, again, I loved the fact that Thor was really um, out of his comfort zone. His, mm-hmm. his hammer is gone. Uh, and he, and for a while, he's kind of lost without it and stuck on this planet. And the fact that they um, completely take a, a 360 degree turn to to the humor of Guardians of the Galaxy, I think fits Chris Hemsworth. I like what they did with the Hulk. His the whole, you know, oh Hulk in a hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Valkyrie just killed it. I mean, she was such a great, well established character. Yeah. And, you know, if you think about it, the events in Ragnarok are so completely bleak and depressing. The fact that it's so funny <laughs> right. completely glosses over the fact that, you know, what are, what are his friends' names? The, the the Furious Three? or the, Oh, I know. Yeah, he loses like two of them. Right? Yeah, they die. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, Asgard is destroyed. House. Yeah. That uh, you know, they rip his eye, they they destroy his hammer, but yet the the and cut his hair is so light. Yeah, that, Dan Lee uh, chops his hair off. That that you know, you kind of gloss over all this tragedy that's happening. Um, that that probably would have really brought you down if they right. went in another direction. <laughs> so I think that the come mood, out of the theater crying. The light mood is kind of <laughs> fitting for it. So okay, that was my number three. Original Avengers was number two. Yeah. Just because of the novelty of seeing all those all characters together, together. it just really gets your your blood going when, especially at the end when they do the round. Oh yeah, out, yep. you know, yep. and, and the Hulk roars, which was the which was the trailer moment. So loved Avengers. Thought Joss did a great job with the humor and the balancing the humor and the action in that. 
Um, and like Jeff, my favorite is the Winter Soldier. There you go. Um, right. Kind of harken back to me like an old 70s kind of um, espionage type movie Very like much the Parallax so. View yeah. or yeah. Or something like that. And the fact that Robert Redford is I was going to say, you bring in Redford and, yeah. and you automatically have that, that, you know, three days of the Condor uh, exactly. yes. kind of feel. To and it, it has, so. and, and it also has uh, my favorite Marvel Easter egg. It's not really a Marvel Easter egg, but when Robert Redford, if you notice, opens his fridge at one point, you see Newman's own salad oh, Newman's, dressing. Uh, and, <laughs> salad dressing. <laughs> love that. Because, you know, for, for those of you unaware, the, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid connection that Newman and Redford famously started yeah. so, there you go so, so, so yeah so that's it you know what's funny is if all five of us were were here talking about this this would be like a two-hour show oh, so yeah. i'm yeah, actually yeah, yeah, glad yeah. that we're down to numbers <laughs> easily so, that's probably a good thing right so yeah. if we wanted to uh do you, did you want to just run down mike's yeah bottom let's five? go yeah let's they deserve, let's do it they deserve a, a voice okay did one of you guys want to do that? Or? Yes, we'll, let's start with his. Uh, okay, we'll go with his you, his bottom four. Mike least liked Iron Man two. Mm. That was Mike's number eighteen. I can see that. Sure. Uh, Iron Man two is at the time wasn't really comparable to the first Iron Man, but it gets better on on subsequent viewings. I think. Um, not to skip put put words in Mike's mouth. Maybe I should just shut up and, and <laughs> just say okay, the numbers. Seventeen say the numbers. Avengers: Age of Ultron. He's got number sixteen Iron Man three. So none of us are real fans of Iron Man three. <laughs> Doctor Strange is his number fifteen, and number fourteen for Mike is Black Panther. So he is also that's yeah, pretty low on the list for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's somebody read Mike's top let's go, five. Dave, let, oh, top five. All right, I'll yeah. I'll, I'll cover Mike's go top ahead. five. So, uh, so five, we are talking about Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, four, Iron Man, three, we're looking at Winter Soldier, two is Avengers, and his number one movie is Civil War. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again, you can't really argue with any of these. No. Yeah, yeah, you can't. So right, no. now, now Dave, I think, has the right to to, to give us Danielle's pick. <laughs> Danielle's. So, let's, so let's go with Danielle's. Danielle's bottom five was at number 18, The Incredible Hulk. Just like Jeff's was. Um, solid choice. Solid choice. <laughs> <laughs> We're on agreement. <laughs> and uh, at 17 was Thor, The Dark World. Yeah. And I believe that Unfair. was Jeff's Unfair. as well. <laughs> And uh, I may need to watch it again now. <laughs> and uh, at 16 was Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 seems to be sitting pretty deep there in our rankings. And at 15 was Iron Man 3. She's not like an Iron Man at all right now. And <laughs> number 14, uh, where is it? Number 14 was Avengers Age of Ultron, which Mike also had pretty low, right. Maybe and like, uh, that Ultron. one also improves with subsequent viewings. If you Does it? give it a shot, yeah. Well, I had a 13, so it's really not that big of a difference. And okay, and at number five here for her, we have uh, the Avengers, the original Avengers, right. the first Avengers. And um, uh, don't get that confused with Captain America, the first Avenger. This was the very first Avengers movie, and what I'm talking about. Number four, we have Thor. At number three, we have Captain America, the Winter Soldier. At two, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. And all the way at number one, we have the original Iron Man. So there you go. So yes, so, she redeems Tony Stark with her number one choice. She does, after not like an Iron Man two or three. Right. All right. <laughs> So, so those are our rankings uh, in anticipation of Infinity War. Yeah. Which I think we're going to be delving into a little bit more next episode. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure there. we're going to beat that forcing, like a dead horse. Forcing, uh, forcing some of us to actually watch the trailers <laughs> and get some spoilers. I've going. only got a couple weeks left. I think <laughs> I can stretch it. You can stretch it? Yes. <laughs> I will pretend out you know, to know what you guys are talking about if you read Oh, oh. All right. All right. So right, um, let's move on. We're gonna go. <laughs> we're gonna go into uh, the Close Encounters. Uh, yeah, oh yes, we all have here. homework to do. Yes. this is very exciting. This is um, a new feature on the show. It's only the second episode, but it's a new feature. <laughs> is it all new feature? That's right. Yes, we're gonna do. We're gonna tackle a classic film. 
Um, uh, uh, maybe not on a weekly basis, but as much as we can. And sure. since our uh, the the subtitle of our show is Confessionals of the Nerd Kind, I figured that maybe we should um, uh, give props to the what we took that title from, what we borrowed that 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 title from, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So we all watched, and um, let's revisit. And yeah. it was the first time Danielle and I have ever seen this movie, just so everybody knows. Yes. So, so yeah, let's, this let's is a brand new movie. You then. I mean, obviously, Jim oh, and you I are, you it. Are, it, it was, it was uh, approximately the worst 137 minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do not hold back. No. Please give us your true feelings. I was just waiting for Jeff to spit out that drink he just had in, yeah. his, in his mouth there for a hot second. I was able to. But, uh, take it <laughs> No, it was um uh, no, my voice just cracked. Um yeah. it was uh you know, I I could see it back then, obviously it being one of the best movies, uh, you know. Um Can uh, you? I mean it's but for the time that it came out and the graphics Did it, did it seem dated to you? It, it it does I mean nowadays I think those spaceships would have looked like, you know. That's iconic. You know, those That's UFOs special. probably would have looked like better, but I mean, it was um it was it was a very interesting movie, to say the least. Did I enjoy it? It would it would have been on my bottom list of, you know, Marvel <laughs> movies if it was a Marvel movie, but you know. <laughs> maybe one day we'll rank uh Spielberg movies. Yeah, there you go. Right, 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 right yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, it that's was actually never not a bad favorite, idea. <laughs> it was never my favorite Spielberg movie. Uh, it, it kind of you can see where he gets the sense of wonder and whimsy that that populates so much of his later movies. Wow, and, that's like, one of my points exactly, which is you see so many of those iconic shots that kind of set the groundwork for Raiders and even E.T. Yes. Yeah. No, There's as, a lot as of a shots director, of people yeah. like staring, looking incredulously, incredulously at what's going on off oh, yeah. screen, like with looks of wonder that you see in Jurassic Park, that you see in ET, that you know, with the with the move the, with the music. Uh, mm -hmm. coming up underneath them and um so there's a lot of that and there's a lot of manic yelling uh as as dave and danielle complained <laughs> about with richard dreyfus and his family during that section of it um and i kind of think that those scenes detract from the movie um just you know and, and i have the same issues that dave and danielle do there's too much noise going on it's too anxiety ridden um right and it's hard to focus yeah, he's Almost. getting henpecked by his wife, who gives you know you know no indication that she you know that he's believable at all. You don't know why these people are married, and um... <laughs> right, and it was like, and it was like the last you saw of her was her and the kids leaving. That was it. That was the last thing you yeah, saw. Of them. Well, let's yeah. get into the fact that Spielberg got some serious issues with bad parenting <laughs> because the two main protagonists, the mom who lets her who loses her little three year old kid in the cornfield. Uh, and then the dude. dad who abandons his family and goes in a spaceship with aliens he doesn't know. Right. Like it, it like Bruh. that was that was that was like one of the things I was thinking about too while watching the movie. I was like, there's stuff that would not fly. And like yeah. how close the dude was with a shovel when he was digging the shovel out of the uh wheelbarrow there and throwing it into the window. Did you see how close the kid's hands were to the side of the wheelbarrow? I was like, holy cow, I was waiting for him to hit his kid's hand. You know, and then the kid in he the wasn't middle of the really road with his kids because I Obviously, he's, he, listen, those, those kids, it, not, it was bad enough they didn't get, get to go see Goofy Golf, but they, they didn't even see Pinocchio. So no. they lost out on both ends. Yes, yes. And you know what's funny is that I never noticed this before, you know, when I've seen it in the past, but I really took note of the people, the travelers at the end, who are, you don't know who they are. Nope. They're with the government, and they're packing up to leave to go on the spaceship. They've got these carry-on bags. What is in those bags? Right. <laughs> what do you take? Well, do you take underwear? Toothbrush. Do you take a toothbrush? I hope they got some preparation H because from the anal probing that's going to happen, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to need some solve at least. You think they would have at least consulted with the people that they brought back? Oh my yeah, like you right, know, so what's up there? What are we going to need? Right, we took yeah. these people. Why we brought them back? Why? And they're very inconsiderate aliens because couldn't you at least put those ships back where you found them? No, we right. got to dump them in the desert somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was yeah, very inconsiderate of these aliens. We have no we have no concept or idea of what their true purpose was. Oh, Bad man. dad who left his family. So maybe um, Richard Dreyfus should have the last word on close encounters, and here he is. How come I know so much? What the hell is going on around here? <laughs> 
Oh, I love that overall that acting from Richard Dreyfus slamming his fist down on the table. Who the hell are you people? <laughs> well, listen, Ronnie made like, she had to have made like 15 pounds of potatoes. It's like, who makes that many potatoes for dinner? <laughs> so maybe he was just overloaded Danielle, with carbs. Danielle yeah, for saw its that time, scene. For Dan- its time, it was very, because you have to think about it, like put it in its setting. It came out the same year as Star Wars. Which is unbelievable. Yeah, hmm. uh, came out later in the year. I think it was like a November or December yeah. release, yep. from what I read on uh, on Wikipedia. Um, and it was it was a year where you know, in search of was still on the air, so there was a lot. It, it oh, really yeah. kind I mean, of the, yeah, the, broke the UFO kind of fire. Kind of, yeah, um, yeah. What's and, more and, amazing though, which is like you said, you know, the fact that it came out in seventy seven. I mean, Spielberg is just coming off from Jaws in seventy five. That's his one major theatrical movie. And yet this very next movie, he not only directed it, but wrote it. I mean, that's, that's pretty phenomenal for a studio to be like, yeah, just go make this movie now. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, although Jaws, you know, in, in retrospect is the much superior film, but. Oh, absolutely. But a cool, but, well, we can get into Jaws later. Yes, Cause obviously yeah. <laughs> there's, there's reasons Jaws is, is what it is. And a lot of it had to do with the technical logical but, issues. And, and Close Encounters helped very much kind of the, the, the modern blockbuster era. It ushered it in along with Star Wars that year. I think The Spy Who Loved Me came out that year, which was a huge hit. Um, and then Close Encounters. And then from there, Superman and every, you know, every other yeah. movie. It seemed like every year there was two huge yeah. movies. And that hadn't really happened before Jaws. I mean, you know, the James Bond no, movies were big, but they weren't, you know. Grandfather of, yeah, the blockbuster, yeah. Yeah. So so we give it its props. You know, it, it has an important place in um, in the annals of, of movie history. I uh, actually enjoyed it a lot more this last viewing. And maybe because I knew I was going to be talking with, with you guys about it. Mm-hmm. But I, I tend to pay attention a little more to the details. I mean, uh, you know, Dave brought this up before we actually started recording. But. The shot where, where he's in the truck at the railroad crossing, I've seen it in numerous, it's, it's one of the most iconic scenes in the entire movie. And yet I still found myself kind of holding my breath. And, and even the way it was shot, the, the truck had a very UFO thing going on with the light flipping around and, and whatever. And it just, to me, it, you know, it, it's very riveting. It's still very kind of, like yeah. you said, it's, 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 it's kind of nerve. Yeah. Right. That, se- yeah. that sequence, I think, is the highlight of the movie. That whole starting with the truck and then him chasing the, the UFOs. Yeah, um, and almost running that, over the little night. kid, Barry, yeah. who's yeah. standing in the middle of the road with some day workers. I don't know what's come on, going Barry, on. Come on, Barry. Come on. That mom, she really <laughs> should have those kids removed. The kid's just out there running in the dark and she's yeah, like in the saying, window. Barry, in the come field. back, Barry. Yeah, and I'm like, old. isn't she going to go run after the kid or something or what? And, <laughs> and those people that are just waiting for the UFO, just looking at the kid in the middle of the road. Yeah, and now one of them lifts a finger to go, hey, you know, get him out. How are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the one man. thing I will point out, which is on Amazon Prime. They, they review this movie. The quote is universally considered the best film ever made about alien abduction or visitation to Earth. Hmm. And all I'm thinking of is so it's not just globally, it is universally. So even the aliens themselves think this is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> they went out of their way is, to get that quote from the aliens. Is it maybe one of these? Is it written by an alien? Maybe. Who yeah, knows? we'll come down, steal your people, yeah, and leave. Yep. Not yep. tell fire, you. Anything. Well, fire in the sky and signs, I think, both give it a run for its money. Oh, well, you, you, let's even go ET. I think yes. I think Danielle mentioned Mars Attacks. You know, yes, Independence yes. Day, yeah. uh, Galaxy Quest. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, all right. All right. So a lot so of good I ones think, there. I, I I think that um, what what next week we'll we'll have another classic feature that we can uh, debate and discuss over, <laughs> dissect and rip Just, apart. Yep. Yep. Movies you loved as a kid that we now will hate. Yeah. We gonna get and into maybe that? there'll be some pleasant surprises. Pleasant, maybe, maybe. perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Have to tune in. And I'm going to be interested to see that you know because they're they're the younger two of of our group. What which movies Dave and Danielle will bring to the table? So it's not always just going to be an old '70s chestnut. Correct. Right. Right. Or even '60s chestnut. No, I wouldn't necessarily. Hey, easy. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily. Uh, no, I think. I think our movie choices are across the board you know yeah. oh, yeah. movies that came out 10 years ago that i could recommend 
right. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so should we get into our, um, confessional. our bread and butter here? Which is our confessional? Our confessional. Should we step into the confessional booth? Let's step into the booth. Is it big enough for the three of us? Usually there's five of us, so we should have extra room. I think I think it maybe it's a segmented booth, like a segmented worm. Confessionals. Dun dun dun. Think... I'll go. Uh, well, I'll go first. Okay. This, all right. There you go. The the, the confessional this week. The the question is, in in this um, last week we were we were considering using this, but we really wanted to go with our first movie last week since it was our first show. Mm-hmm. But now what we'd like to do is share our favorite movie. Who is the um, tough ones? Yeah, and uh, just so you can give a little bit, uh, we can give you a little insight into our psyche. Psyche. So, oh boy. so, so but this was very hard. This is like choosing. It is very movies. hard. I agree. My number one all-time favorite movie. Ooh. This is the one that I can watch over and over again without fail, Ooh. not get bored, and and laugh every time at the funny parts and um, and get the blood going with the exciting parts. I am a James Bond fan. I love the James Bond movie. Nope. Love all Copyright, the James sorry. Bonds. I grew up with Roger Moore, so I have a soft spot for Roger Moore. No, um, but Shady as much guys. as I love him, and you know, as much as Daniel Craig is cool too, and you know, of course, Sean Connery, my favorite James Ooh. Bond movie, thus Ooh. my favorite movie, period, is On Her Majesty's I'm Secret really? Service. George, George Lazenby. Lazenby. You see, now, the reason I like this, George Lazenby only made one James Bond movie. Um, he he took over for Sean Connery after Sean Connery left with uh, You Only Live Twice. Then Sean was done. He was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So then the producers- Can you say that in your best uh, Sean Connery voice? It's like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice. <laughs> so, so, so the producers were in a quandary. They had to find a new James Bond. So they came up with this Australian model who had only done acting in commercials. And I think he won them over because of his fight scene, from what I understand. So anyway, so his, they got George, George Lazenby, to do Honor Majesty's Secret Service. And it's actually a story in which Bond falls in love and gets married at the end of the movie. And it really kind of presents him as a more human character. And the reason I love it so much, and the reason I love George Lazenby's performance is I don't think Sean Connery could have pulled it off in the same way, just because George Lazenby was such an amateur actor. He kind of came at it at a, at a very like honest, um, open kind of a, he gave it that kind of an approach. Maybe he didn't do it purposely because he didn't have the craft, but that's how he comes over. <laughs> but do you and, think that they would have written a movie like that if Connery was still cast in that role? I think it would have been very interesting to see what he what he would have done with it. I'm not sure if they would have given that to him. Yeah, and Honor Majesty's Secret Service isn't actually formulaic. That's why it kind of breaks off. It does have the Blofelds in it, and he does. There is a take over the world kind of a plan, but the whole you know subplot of Bond and Tracy and how they get married. Just the fact that. Lazenby is very kind of vulnerable in those scenes where Connery would have been like the, you know, very much the Superman. He was, you know, well lived in that role by the time gotcha. he only lived twice. Okay. So, so that's, that's reason. And the fact that it takes place during the Christmas season, it's a Christmas movie for me. It's so a I Christmas have, uh, James Bond. So it's like Rudolph the Red News Reindeer for, you know, anybody else that, that <laughs> would watch that special every Christmas. I have to watch Honor Majesty's Secret Service. All right. Nice. All right, David. Ah. You're up. I'll let you go, Jeff. Go ahead. All right. Well, uh, obviously, we all know that Star Wars is my number one movie, but um, (laughs) we're not going to go there because uh, I've got many, many more uh, go-to flicks. Um, Back to the Future, I mentioned, is is one of my ultimate Mm -hmm. go-tos. North by Northwest by... um, Hitchcock. Hitchcock, my Lord. And delving into the confessional, I'm going to go... It's more of a guilty pleasure movie. It's a movie I've seen numerous times as a kid. I think it ran like every hour on the hour when it was on HBO. It was directed by Peter Bogdanovich. And uh, basically, it's just just crazy over the top madcap. It's kind of screwball comedy. Uh, she's like this scatterbrained spitfire. There's, you know, mis- mistaken identity, accidental mix up. The, you know, there's four people with four identical bags. One has, you know, in in indigenous rocks in it one has jewelry one has top secret papers and another just has like you know clothing and apparel and uh but barbara streisand's uh, chasing down the main character uh, ryan o'neill and madeline khan which is her very first movie role 
Um, and it's just one of those silly, crazy antic flicks with the, with this uh, over the top chase scene at the end on a bike. Uh, I love it as a kid. Um, it is still a movie I absolutely adore. And uh, so there you go. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? What's... Ryan O'Neill, Barbra Streisand. Yes, that was an HBO movie. Uh, yeah. I, I saw it many times as well. Yep, there you go. So, right up there with the uh, Duchess and the Dirtwater Fox, which I think they played every hour as well. <laughs> so I feel Not... like when it comes to like favorite movies, I, I feel like people have their favorite movies as a kid, and then they have their favorite movies as like a teenager, and then they have their oh, favorite absolutely. movies as like an adult. Mine changes know? by the hour. <laughs> exactly, you know, my point. But uh, I mean, one that really stuck to me ever since I, I was a... Uh, uh, I was gonna say a, a young kid, but I, I'd be like a young teenager, I would say, um, and a, a big kid, if you will, <laughs> would be uh, that movie, that thing you do. Oh. And I don't know if that's because I'm a musician myself, okay. and I just loved the music, you know, movies and all that stuff. But uh, you know, like that one, I could watch that endlessly, and it just would never get old. But um. A runner up to that, uh, it's it's not like you know anything crazy, but uh, I really loved Jim Carrey's Liar Liar. Oh, that was that Those was. Solid. I think I could uh, think I can uh, do every line to that movie, and <laughs> that I can still do it right. to this day. You know, you know, you know that's that's oh, yeah. a, when you when you can recite the entire dialogue. Yeah. Uh, Dave, how do you rate uh, Ace Ventura when nature calls? Because that oh. is my personal favorite Jim Carrey movie. Oh, that's a good one too. I that's. Know. That's definitely right after Liar Liar for sure. For sure. Is, is the Ace Ventura ones. I know yeah. that's one of Danielle's favorites as well, of Jim Carrey's. Nice. But but anyways, awesome. that's uh right. that's pretty much all we got for you guys. Uh hopefully next week for episode three we'll have everybody here next time. Um you know, uh we're definitely gonna have a Walking Dead discussion since uh, like we said earlier in the beginning of the episode, the season finale is tonight. Uh, so we're going to recap everything that's happened there. So Jeff, get caught up. Uh, I am. And, <laughs> and, you know, we're going to talk about uh, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Yeah, um, we're going to hit that Infinity Wars trailer. Yep, the Infinity War trailer, because that comes out. Uh, to, uh, right, because that comes out that, uh, cool. that, that following Friday. So. All right, man. Well, we held it All off. Right. Just the three yes. of us, boys. All right. We did it. We pulled it off. Let's hope the other two are proud of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, when they listen, hopefully they'll say something. But yes. um, anyways. if they listen, yeah. So you'd be like, "How'd it go?" They went good. <laughs> so, guys, nice. we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time on another episode of TMI. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you. Yes. Peace out. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.